Let's talk about the Student Success Act, or SSA, the new law about public education funding in Oregon. This all started in 2017-18 when the Joint Committee on Student Success traveled around the state and talked to educators, administrators, students, families, and community organizations about what our students needed. Their final report spoke to the need for adequate and stable public education funding. The following year, educators and their allies came together in Salem in February for the March for Our Students. 5,000 folks converged on the Capitol demanding that our legislature pass funding for our schools. In March across the state, we did overpass banner drops where we engaged our communities and let them know about the crisis in our classrooms, why we needed funding, what our students deserved. In April in the Portland metro area, we did Take It to the Max where folks all across the community rode Max trains into downtown and we rallied and demanded better conditions for our kids. And finally, on May 8th, we had the Day of Action in the Portland metro area. 25,000 folks showed up on the waterfront and in the streets to demand better schools for our students. It was kind of a big deal. Then in Salem, just a couple of days later, the Student Success Act came to the floor. It passed the Senate, it passed the House, and eventually the governor signed it into law. Hooray! A lot of this was due to our efforts, educators and their allies, and the Red for Ev movement. When we are united, we are strong. So give yourself a pat on the back. Now, down to business. Money from the Student Success Act is going all across the state. That's $2 billion every biennium. If you miss that, $2 billion with the B dollars every two years. For Beaverton, that's going to result in $31 to $34 million. Y'all, that's a lot of money. So how is this money going to be spent? It's going to be divided into three buckets. 20% is going to go into the early learning account, 30% to statewide education initiatives, and 50% to the student investment account. Let's break these out. The early learning account, just like it sounds, will give money to early learning, fully funding early intervention and early childhood special education, expanding relief nurseries, establishing the early learning equity fund, preschool slots, PD for early childhood educators, early head start and parenting engagement, everything for our youngest students. The statewide education initiatives will give money to things like the High School Success Act, which was Measure 98. It'll expand nutrition programs to make sure more of our students are fed. It'll provide funding for statewide success plans for various marginalized communities, PD for educators, summer school for Title I schools, and ESD support for school districts. Awesome. Now the big bucket that we need to be paying attention to is the student investment account. This bucket serves two main purposes. First, we want to meet students' mental and behavioral health needs. And second, we want to increase academic achievement and reduce academic disparities for students of color, students with disabilities, emerging bilingual students, students navigating poverty, homelessness and foster care, and other groups who have historically had disparities. These two are huge because this is what educators have been talking about for years, and it is in the law. Now this money goes to districts through non-competitive grants. That basically means that there's enough resources, but districts have to meet certain requirements. This is where y'all come in. We'll get to that in a bit. There are four allowable uses to make sure that districts are aiming for those two main purposes of the law. First, we're gonna get to reducing class size. Y'all, as much as I know you love having giant classes full of students with various needs, uh, various backgrounds, different IEPs, speaking different languages, and all of that. We know, we know that when you have smaller classes, students get the individual attention that they need. The second allowable use is a well-rounded education. This includes art, music, and PE, but also shop, technology, college, and career prep, librarians, culturally responsive programs, dropout prevention, tag programs, all of the things that we know our students need to thrive. Third is instructional time, making sure that there are enough hours and days to meet our students' needs, that there are summer school programs, and that we are being effective with our time that we do have with our students. The fourth allowable use is for health and safety. This can be as simple as hiring more counselors, more social workers, more nurses and school psychs to have those available for our students, but it also provides funds for bettering our facilities to make our students safer. So reducing class size, a well-rounded education, instructional time and health and safety. So I said that we need to be paying attention to this bucket. 
The reason is, remember those non-competitive grants? The requirements are that our districts have to create a needs assessment and a continuous improvement plan. Now, your district might tell you that they already have a team working on those, which kind of leaves us stakeholders, educators, etc., out of the process. But wait! Districts are required by the law to engage staff, students, families, and community stakeholders as they develop those plans. Huzzah! That means that we need you, whether you are an employee, a student, a family, or a community stakeholder in the Beaverton School District, we need you to show up. The district is required to solicit input from all of those stakeholders in five main areas. Reducing academic disparities, meeting students' mental or behavioral health needs, providing equitable access to academic courses, allowing teachers and staff to have sufficient time to serve students, and establishing and strengthening partnerships. That's a lot of stuff, and I bet you have some thoughts you'd like to share. Let me tell you how. First, you can take the survey at this link. That provides us with some specific information that we can bring to the district to incorporate into those plans. Next, you can come to a Let's Talk About Beaverton event, RSVP at that link, where BEA is hosting educators and community members to come together to talk about students. Next, you can go to a school board meeting or a district-led community conversation to talk directly to the district about what our students need. Finally, you can share this video and all of those engagement opportunities with everybody you know in Beaverton. Our voice matters, and we need to make sure that we're part of this process. Remember, y'all, when we are united, we are strong, and we need you to show up for our students.